Good morning, everybody. We are about to make pancakes and Claire is ready. Are you ready? Oh my gosh. So we call Claire the blueberry queen because this kid downed blueberries like you would not believe. We usually do date pancakes, so I'm gonna do some date pancakes and feed this little kid. And I'm gonna make me some coffee. Dates! Okay, okay, so we got pancakes going. Say hi. We got pancakes going, we have coffee going. Tim just got home. Tim gets up at like, what, like five, 5.30, sometimes four. And he goes to the gym, and now he's back. Guess who's here? Guess who's here? Claire, guess who's here? Who's that? <laughs> Is it Daddy? <gasps> it's Daddy! Oh gosh. Oh, my kisses. Is that kisses? Oh. Oh, look. Oh. Is she doing it? Good job. I think she thinks I'm worshiping. Oh. You praising oh. Jesus? Oh shoot. <laughs> Are you gonna smell it? <laughs> every I, day. I burn stuff every day. Every day. I'm not making fun of my wife, okay? But she does burn a lot of food. <laughs> also, I'm gonna make a shake. So, if you see boys in our yard. <laughs> not, not bad. He knows where the door is. See yourself out. <laughs> the hardest part of the morning is picking what mug. <coughs> we'll go Disney. We're here, Daisy. Ready? Daisy. So, um, for us the morning, I literally will sit in this chair, I will literally sit in this chair, drink this coffee, and I'll just mentally just like be in my own thoughts, and I have a lot of good ideas in the morning, so I just sit and think and read my Bible, and we have worship music on, and read books to Claire, hi, and um, it's pretty much how my mornings go. So I came in here to finish the vlog up because it is the second, we're two days after our big launch. Um, so I'm so excited that it launched. It's out there, but you can't take it back. And I was so nervous up until that point, but up until we launched it, because I told him, I was like, there's like no going back. You have to follow through. Uh, someone told me one time, it was one of my bosses, they said they hired me because they knew that I was a really good starter, but that I wasn't really a good finisher, basically. And I think they meant it, like, well. Like, I'm really good at starting things. I don't, you know, start things with gusto and, like, let's do this, let's reform, let's, you know, fix all this stuff. And 
but the mundane and the follow through is hard is harder for me because it's not as exciting. So when they said that to me, I was like, I have got to be a finisher. Like, ew. Like, who just wants to start things and not finish anything? So I had that thought come to my brain when we were getting ready to launch Loved Well that I'm a good starter, but I'm not very good at that finishing. And I knew that this was a commitment to follow through and to finish and to make every part you know of the journey exciting even though sometimes it, it won't be but I think it will <laughs> but I just wanted to tell you guys that if you have something in your heart to do I used to be super super anxious about like what I was gonna do with my life not because I wasn't sh I didn't have interest but because I was so afraid of missing it and so because I was so afraid of missing it then I didn't really do anything which is almost well, which is just as bad. <laughs> it is worse. If you, the Bible says that Jesus went around doing good and healing all. If you just take that pattern for your life, just go around and do good and heal all. Like you're gonna find the niche of your life. Don't stress. Just don't stress about it. Start, finish, just go and do good. Like you don't have to have this big five year plan. If you do, that's fantastic. I think a lot of times we have plans and we have dreams and we have all these things but we want to make sure it's the will of God but if you look at the Bible it doesn't like lay out what our life details look like but we do have an overarching idea because God gave us the Great Commission he told us to do unto others as you would have them do to you he told us love God love others he told us to go about doing good because we're supposed to be like Jesus so like there's a lot of information about what our life is supposed to look like and we just make our life fit that. So no matter what job you have, you can be totally doing the will of God. It just makes so much more sense. And as you're doing what God wants you to do, it may be a position that you don't love. I bet you 100% you're going to find your passion point. And if you want to start a nonprofit, like Love Well, go for it. If you want to join a company or organization that already exists, do it. Like it doesn't, it doesn't have to be this grand thing. Paul said to let us live small lives. You know, he was like, he's like, just do what you know to do and just go do it. Just do it. <laughs> so I just want to encourage you to just do something, no matter what it is. If it's if it's been in your heart, just go do it because it's better to do something than to do nothing because we're about to get deep. Because at the end of our lives, when we stand before God, he, he said in the Bible that he has prepared good works for us in advance for us to do. Like that's amazing. And as Christians, we will answer for the good that we've done and the bad that we've done. Did you, did you do good works I set up for you? You know, did you you operate in the nine gifts of the spirit did you operate in the nine fruits of the spirit did you you know like what did you do with your life i remember asking that to someone one time i was like what are you guys doing but it wasn't like a like what are you guys doing work-wise but it's like what are you guys doing with your with your jesus what are you doing with your jesus and so i submit that question to you what are you doing just do it <laughs> And I'll tell you what, up until Love Well Launch, I was nervous. I'm still nervous. I, I still have to be totally dependent on Jesus. I know this is you. So being obedient and doing these things doesn't necessarily make everything sunshine and roses. It makes everything sunshine. <laughs> but you really have to just trust. So... If you guys want to watch the launch video, if you haven't seen it, I'm going to roll right into it. And I hope you enjoy it. And um, I love you guys. Thanks, friends, for watching. And thanks for joining us on our morning. It's so chill. Our morning is so chill. Sometimes I'm like, people have such busy lives. And right now, our life in this time, is it's, our mornings are really easy. And so I'm soaking it up. My kid, kid's watching her, her kids' shows right now. She she's so easy and I know it'll be different once we start adding each season changes but right now man our mornings are pancakes and coffee and couch and Jesus I'm gonna I'm gonna take advantage of that 
but thanks for thanks for watching and I hope you enjoy our, the Love Dwell launch video. I first saw Kitty when I was scrolling through the discovery feed of Instagram and I was just drawn in by those big eyes she had in a breathing tube and she just looked very ill and I clicked on her story and I found out that she was ill. She had a heart issue, she had to have open heart surgery when she was just days old and so they went through this just huge long process trying to find the right medication and the right dosage and she was near death multiple times. It seemed like every night I would be rocking my newborn praying that this little girl would see the next day. And so it was amazing after 10 months when she went home from the hospital it was glorious and all of Instagram who was following the story were rejoicing with this family that their little girl was finally going home. It was awesome. And through Kitty's story, I got connected to a lot of other sick kids and I just started praying for all of them. It was like I was collecting sick children and asking people to pray for them and getting their stories out there. One little girl in particular, her name was Winsley, and she had a heart condition and it was actually a year ago. She ended up passing away. She had heart complications. I was really upset and I was like, I just have to do something. I just wanted to do something and I just didn't know what that thing was. I just knew I wanted to continue to pray for these sick kids and these families that are going through these huge ordeals that it just changed my entire perspective on life. I could be complaining about my kid teething. Well, there's a mom just praying desperately that her kids are going to live through the next hour. And so I just prayed. I remember in April of 2018, I prayed. I asked God, I was like, send me the sick, send me the ill, send me the hopeless, these people that are literally on the last rung of the ladder of life. Bring me those people because I just wanted to touch them, you know, before anything bad could happen. I didn't want another Winsley to happen, but little did I know that by asking God to send all of these kids and all these parents and, and all these hospital staff to me, that he was actually going to send me to them. And that is how Love Dwell was born. What the purpose of Love Dwell is, is all wrapped up in the name. We want to love people excellently, and we also want to love them into wellness. We want love to be the touch point that touches them mentally, emotionally, and physically, bringing healing. And this is how we want to do it. We want to do it in three different ways. One, through touch points. We want to give gifts, tangible gifts, pictures, and we also want to leave cards. So leaving well wishes and just encouraging, just we love you, we're praying for you, you can do this. Second, we want to create experiences. So we want to throw kids parties every month. We want to bring in costume characters, we want to have crafts, coloring pages, dance parties, whatever the hospital will allow us to do, we want to create joyful experiences for these kids, their caregivers, and the hospital staff. And then we want to go in room to room. So we want to do this with adults and with kids. We want to get in there, we want to sit on their bedside, just chat, and spend time with them. And then before we leave, we want to hand them a card and ask if we can pray for them. And then third, we want to offer online support and resources. And what this is going to look like is on our website, we have an amazing prayer page that people can submit prayer requests. And then those prayer requests will go out to the prayer team. We also have a YouTube channel with encouraging and fun content for kids and caregivers. There are four different ways for you to get involved. Number one, you can shop Love Well Apparel. And this is going to be our number one form of fundraising. Second way for you to get involved is to join our prayer team. You can go to the website, sign up, and you're going to receive a monthly list of people that you get to pray for. Number three, we want to be able to give out gifts and pictures every time we visit the kids. So this is a great way for the whole family to get involved. You can sit down, color a picture, write something encouraging on the back, and send it in, and we'll hand it out when we go to our kids' parties. Number four, you can donate. 100% of the proceeds go into our hospital outreaches. When I first saw Kitty's face, I had no idea that her story would change my story. Little Winsley, who didn't even live past six days, changed the course of my history. 
We don't know how our lives are impacting others, and that's why we exist. We exist to change people's stories. So join us as we love people into wellness.